Isaiah 52, 51 in verse 2, the NLT version first. Let's read it together after the count of two. One, two, go. Yes, think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave birth to your nation. Abraham was only one man when I called him. But when I blessed him, he became a great nation. He was one man when he started. But when I blessed him, he became a great nation. He was one man when I called him. When he started, he was one man. But when I blessed him, he became a great nation. It is my prayer today that the blessing of the Lord will make much more out of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. He was one. It was just one company. It was just one expression. But when I blessed it, it became much more. Only three loaves. But when I blessed the loaves, they multiplied. Just a million in your bank account. Wait and see what it becomes when I bless it. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God here? Where you stay may be small, but you watch and see what the blessing can make out of it. He was but one when I called, but when I blessed, it became something very great. The business may be small, but you watch and see what it becomes when I put my blessing on it. Help me look at someone around you and tell the person, it has not yet appeared what I will look like. You watch and see what the blessing will make out of my life. I'm sure they're going to give me some depth here. You watch and see what the blessing will make out of my life. Let's see what the message translation says and then we'll move on. Message translation. Can we do that together? One, two, go. Yes. Ponder Abraham, your father, and Sarah who bore you. Think of it. One solitary man, when I called him, but once I blessed him. So can I say here today, you are blessed. And what will be the result of it? I'm not hearing you. You will do what? So the moment a man of God blesses you, what you should begin to walk towards is what? You are not blessed to remain the way you are. You are not blessed to continue the way you are. The purpose of the blessing is to multiply. That's the purpose of the blessing. Let's see the amplified version and we close. We close this reading. The amplified version. Let's do that together again. Once you go, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who gave birth to you in pain. For I called him when he was but one. Then I blessed him. Can you, can, you, can you see what the blessing can do here? Am I talking? Can you see what the blessing can do? Can you see what it means to just walk up to an authorized servant of God and say sir bless me just that word I bless you what it does is unspeakable pastor we were in Lagos last year for one of the conferences and this there's this young lady in the Lagos church and she serves, I think, as an usher. But she's into real estate, so she real estate, I mean, she markets people's lands. And she came to meet me and she was, she just wanted to see me and put a blessing in my hand. And I looked at her and I said, and I said, what you do now? She said, she just sells land. I said, I said, no, you're not selling lands. I said, you're going to be a developer. 
She was telling me recently, she said, Daddy, when you called me a developer, she said, I laughed. After I, leave, I left you, I laughed. Because first, I don't even own a land. A small piece of land in Lagos. And you're calling me a developer. I think I need to be developed first. Not to be. You can't call me a developer when I need to be developed. But that's the way the blessing works. When he was one. You need the blessing when you don't look like it. Have you noticed that there are people who are looking out for ways to bless you when you have become many? It's, it's, it's when God has made you many, then they start having prophecies for you. That's when they tell you, the Lord sent me to pray for you. Where were you when I was born? Where were you when there was no beauty in me that anybody should behold me? Can, can you bless me when I don't look like it? It feels. Can, can, I, can I bless you when you don't look like it? Can I say to you, you are blessed when, when you look messed up? And I said to her, I said, I see you developing properties. <laughs> And the girl laughed. And then pastor just a few months ago, she just come and said, Daddy, I think you will need to come to Lagos. I said, what is it? She said, you just need to come to Lagos. So yesterday I had an event in Lagos. Because of her, I had to leave Abuja. Left the house at about 5, 5.30 there in the morning. Catch up the first flight. Pastor John picked me up. And we drove to Lekki. And for you, for you to know how serious as this so she waited to pick us up at this present house right in the heart of Lekki. in fact when you get to the present house the immediate turning right so as soon as we got there she drove and turned right ah, pj said papa he be like see this girl now inside heart of Lekki, she get lando i said no 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 i said she's driving through Lekki to where we are going to i said don't think I said, we are driving through the place to where, I said, I said, she said the land is in Lekki. I said, it's likely Bejuleki. So, I, 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 if it could even be Pastor Sunday's area we're heading to. So, I, I'm telling you, as soon as we turned, Pastor Joe was like, Papa, it's like, it's like this lady, what? It's, it's like she has something in the heart of Lekki. I said, no, no, no. I said, you know people in Lagos now, I said they know how to follow in between to bust out on an express. So in my mind, I was getting ready for a journey to a bed. Barely two and a half minutes from this present house in the midst of amazing developments surrounded by massive buildings. The only 3,000 square meters there. So when we were parking, I said, PJ, not true. And as here is this tiny looking girl, 30 something years old. When she saw me, she was like, Daddy, Daddy. I said, Leave Daddy for this matter. Is this what the blessing can do? A man just looked at her, and the man said, he said, I have a property. Will you like to take it? We'll just do joint, whatever. I said, would you like to take it? She says, I don't have land, money to. He said, no, no. He said, I like you. I just want to help you. He said, you are a hardworking girl. I just want you to rise up. And she said, Papa. She said, I was praying for who will do joint venture with me. She said, many people began to come after me that they want to become my joint venture partner. She said, Daddy, you've taught us to pray. I began to pray. She said, in a vision, I saw the man and I called him. I said, you are the one that the Lord said will be my partner. And he turned out to be a child of God, very close to Pastor Bolaji. And they were all on ground yesterday. When I look at the land, I said, this is what the blessing 
sir, 25 million worth of sand filling that was done that they should pay for and other things that they were supposed to pay for. That's how they looked at her. They said, don't worry about it. Take it. Already designed, the terraces they are going to be raised, raising up and the apartments they are going to be raising up. We poured oil on the ground and said, let work start. And right there, God gave us a word that there will not be 70% done when they will begin to move towards the next project. The blessing. On, uh, on Thursday, or was it Wednesday, that I was with Pastor John to go to train the CEOs. Pastor John had called me and said, Sir, he said there are CEOs who own real estate companies and that they are gathering together and they want me to come train them and pray for them. And I prepared seriously for them to teach them from leadership um, to, um, you know, scaling up and the rest of that. God bless you, Joy. You were there. God bless you, ma'am. She was there. And we got there. And I saw these amazing people in a very simple setting. And when I was about to start training, God bless you, you were even there. You were there. When I was about to start training, the guy said, no, sir, he wants to talk. First of all, he started taking me into rooms. He said, I want to take you into, took me downstairs, took me upstairs, took me up. <laughs> I said, I thought I came for training. I didn't know I came for tourism. Tourism, massive building. Cut a long story short. He says, I want to tell you my story. I said, what is the story? He said, sir, 20, he said, I'm your product. He's going to be in church this after second service. He's going to be in church, second service. He said, sir, I'm your product. He said, I came to attend TLA, I think 2020, 2019. And Pastor John said, when he used to come for TLA, Pastor, he couldn't afford transportation. He will trek to church. Pastor John said the way he normally he said he can see, see his face he said he's a sweaty guy he will sweat to church. He looks sweaty even in church but after TLA Pastor John said he noticed the guy disappeared from the radar the next thing he called him he said I want you to come and do some training in my place. PJ got there and said what is this and the next thing the guy said he wants me to come. He said I want Reverend Sam to come and see what God has done so he is not, she was there. He was, he is not only a CEO of a real estate company. He has other real estate owners now who subscribe to him as their mentor. With properties across board. He can afford now to put $60,000 for mentorship. $60,000 for mentorship. Please have a look at your neighbor. Say, you are Macarius. You are dangerously blessed. And it will dangerously show. You are not hearing me. I say it will dangerously show. Please be seated. So let's, let's do a little work here. Let's do a little work. So the first thing that happened in Genesis was that when God created man, I want you to think about this. When God created man, he said, let us make man in our own image and let them, uh, let them be in our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have, let them have, um, can, I, can I have someone with a seat here? Just anybody with a seat. Just, just come you can come on the stage. Oh, you no, don't bother taking that out. I think there should be a seat here. Just any any seat. You can bring me one from there, sir. Yeah. I, I want to show you why sometimes we struggle to get the things that we want to do. I want to show you why we struggle to get them done. I did not understand this also. And I've been in church for years. 
Because nobody was able to make me understand the connection. Not because they are not teaching, maybe because I was not understanding. So I have nobody to blame. I have my own level of understanding to blame. And I'm praying that today you will get it. In the name of Jesus. So the first thing the Bible said, let us make man in our image come. Sit down. In our likeness. And let him have, let him have, over the bee, fish of the sea, let him have, let him have, let him have, let him have. So God created man. So first was the assignment. I, I, it was clearly, it was clearly defined. The reason why I'm creating this person is for this purpose, right? The reason why you're coming into this life is for this assignment. The reason why you are born is for X and Y. The reason why you are in existence is to start enterprises that will enable you to advance kingdom purpose. Okay? Alright, so that's very clear. Assignment clear. So here's where the problem now lies. So God made man in his own image. Ready to function. Ready to function. Everything design, machine, design, morphology, physiology, anatomy, everything designed. Okay, custom built, ready to go. But, but God said, hey, wait a minute. He said, you are not going to get it done just because I made you to look like me. So God said, I need to do something called Beraka. God said, I need to bless you. I need to bless you and that blessing is what we call the empowerment to carry out the assignment. So, so, so we're living in a generation where everybody wants to know my assignment. And many get to find what the assignments are, but they never get the assignments are, but they never get the empowerment to carry out the assignment. So here's what I want to do. I know what I want to do, but I don't have what it takes to get it done. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So it is sometimes not the lack of the knowledge of the assignment. It is a lack of the empowerment to carry out the assignment. The Baraka to carry out the assignment. So it is the Baraka that is released upon you. That enables you to carry out the assignment. Which eventually in an existential state makes you to be called a Makarios. A blessed one. So yes I know my assignment. That was the same reason why Jesus, when he was, when he was with the disciples, watch this carefully. He said to them, he said, I have taught you for three and a half years, so you have theology, right? You know, you know, if I, you don't, you didn't go to Bible college to study about me. You've lived with me. So Jesus said, you've been with me. You've seen how I do ministry firsthand. So pattern is established. But here's where the problem, like Jesus said, I'm also not going to let you go. Wait until you are empowered to carry out the assignment. The reason for frustration is not because of the absence of assignment, but because of the absence of empowerment. If that resonates with you, wave your hands at me. You know what to do. Is there anybody here? Wave your hand. You know what to do. But you lack the power to get it done. Wave your hands. That's what it is. I never knew the connection too. When this connected, when the puzzles came together. Listen to what he said. He said, tarry, don't run. Don't be in a rush to run out. Don't be in a rush to go get started. He said, wait. The reason he told them tarry is because there's a potential to think because I have known him and I know what I want to do. The danger is to run. He said, wait. Otherwise, you will meet with the mother of all frustration. It's a matter of time. Wait. If what was coming after wait is not important, he won't tell them to wait. They had clear assignment. Go into the world. Preach the gospel. So the assignment was very clear. From Jerusalem to the outermost part of the earth. Scope was clear. But he said to them, wait. Get empowered. 
I'm sure you know that the last thing that legitimizes a child's, a woman's life before leaving her father's house is that moment when the parents bless and say, we release you. Is that okay? Until that time, any attempt to go without the parent's blessing illegitimizes whatever she does. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Yes, she's matured. Yes, she's a woman. Yes, she can have a baby. She may even have a baby outside of wedlock. But the point is this, it is illegitimate what she has done. It takes the blessing of the father to usher into that dimension of whoever the father puts as a representative. I am trying to get something across to you. Be empowered for what you have been assigned to. Be empowered for what you've been called to do. <laughs> Nothing frustrates like jumping into the pool and find out that you are drowning. It doesn't have to be so. It doesn't have to be this hard. Please, I'm sharing this with you. It doesn't have to be what, sir? This hard. So when God made man, and God blessed him, and as soon as God blessed him, watch this carefully, God stepped aside. Now you can begin to function. And watch that. It became what we call the law of precedence. Meaning from that moment onwards, that man too can now bless his own. Because just like God blessed, God made him and God back off, backed off. Even so now that man can begin to make children. The same thing God did to him, God bless him. This man now can now bless children. And that one too can bless his children. Because the less is blessed by the greater. Is that okay? And so, Abraham blessed Isaac. The blessing is so powerful that two brothers had to fight for it. The blessing is so powerful. God bless you, sir. The blessing is so powerful that Esau cried for it. Are you getting me, sir? It's so powerful, woman of God, that when Esau came back and the father said, sorry, were you not the one I blessed? He said, no, daddy. The Bible say he wept. And listen to what he said, mommy. He said, he said, daddy, is there no more blessing left for me? Listen, he said, just one. Is there not one blessing left for me? I thought he's a macho. This is a hunter. This is a strong guy. This is a skillful hunter. And this guy is crying for the blessing. What is it about the blessing that he can't ignore? The Bible later said he sought for it with tears. What is it about the blessing that, that will make the mother of Jacob plot and put Jacob there? What is it about the blessing? What is it about the blessing that will make a man called Balaam to say to Balak, Sir, you asked me to curse them. He said, when I got there, I realized I came late. He said, what do you mean? He said, sir, before I got there, I, I, I didn't know that somebody blessed them. So when I got there, I saw a signboard, Mercarius. Am I talking to somebody here? And, and, and so Balak said, so what, what does that mean? Come and curse them. He says, sir, you don't understand the way the ordinances of the heavens and the earth work. Sir, you don't come after a man has been blessed to curse him. Please help me touch somebody say, it doesn't work. Come and touch somebody say, it doesn't work. Say, it won't work. Say, not on me. Say, I am blessed.
<laughs> I pray you get the depth of this. Your rest will come. I know what I'm talking about. I've been here and I've been here. I know the difference. I know the difference between struggling without the oppression of the blessing and, and, and functioning under the influence of the blessing. I know the difference. I know the difference. Somebody say rest. Oh yes, it brings rest. It brings rest. Somebody looked at you in the office and say, if you don't kinikko, if you don't do something, we will finish you. Please call the person. Say, Sorry, ma. Because I love you, that's why I'm talking to you. I hope you don't want to write your own will by yourself too early. Because you are coming. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Shout it loud. You should have come before I said Macarius. You should have come before I was blessed. You tried to curse me. It will back. Your life is better without pronouncing a curse on me. You're not hearing me. Your life is better without pronouncing a curse on me. I'm going to tell you why. The moment you attempt to curse me, it won't only come back, it will come back seven times more. Your life will be worse than before you began to pursue me. Touch your neighbor say, I'm blessed. <laughs> you don't know the advantage the blessing creates. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the God. He's blessed, right? So he's a blessed man. Not sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of, his, of the law. And in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree. Can you begin to see his distinction? Just begin to see what separates it. Can you see how his life is separate? Just because he's blessed... It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in water. Uh, it says, one translation says evergreen. Evergreen. Is that okay? And listen to what the Bible now says about this blessed man. Whatsoever he do it. So, okay. How many things? Come on, talk to me now. How many things? The Bible says whatsoever. Somebody shout whatsoever. If the blessed man goes into Akara, Akara will prosper. If the blessed man goes into Amala, Amala will prosper. If the blessed man goes into fixing of hair, it will prosper. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Amen. Listen to what the Bible says, his leaves shall not wither. So he is not regulated by the economy of a nation. Sorry, can I say this to you? I hope you know the word, oh, Nigeria is very hard. I, I hope you know it's not everybody that says the same thing. Is that okay? Now, into that class of flourishing and thriving people, by the grace that make it such happen, let the blessing throw you in there. The Lord told us, remember December 31st, the Lord said this will be a tough year. And the Lord said, as it is going to be a tough year, remember that? Did I not tell you? The Lord said it to be a tough year, but there is a blessing released on you that in the midst of the toughness, you will flourish. In the midst of it, you will thrive. You have no idea what God is doing in the life of some of our members this year. And you will ask yourself, are you in this same Nigeria? In the midst of it is tough, it is tough. That's why many are breaking into new realms. Let me decree and declare that the blessing push you into a flourishing status. I don't know if I'm praying for 10 of you here, but I want to decree over you now that the power of the blessing rests upon you. The blessing begins to make you thrive. I decree and declare the rest of this year will be the best of this year. If you have faith to receive it, you will see it happen for you. The rest of this year will be the best of this year. Please sit down. I only have three minutes left. 
My intention today is to talk on the purpose and the power of the blessing. Two things burning strongly in my heart. But I just sense God wants me to just take it with you this way. So I'll do that in the second service. The purpose and the power of the blessing. An understanding that you need to pass across to your children. And your children's children. Let me say this. Above all things, let your children value the blessing. Educate them, but let them value the blessing. I can show you many today, mommy, who it is not their education that has brought them to where they are. Their education makes them enjoy it. Is that okay? I can show you many, sir, that if not for the blessing at work in their lives, they will not be where they are. There is something about the blessing. And let that blessing speak over your children's children. I am so passionate about what I'm talking about. So because it has made a difference in my life. I didn't know. Struggle continues until the blessing takes over. Did you hear what I said? We can write that down. Struggle continues until the blessing takes over. Pastor Sam, how comes unbelievers, Muslims, Hindus, how comes they are not Christians, but they are prospering? They seem blessed. Or maybe I should remind you that after Abraham blessed Isaac, before, if, let's keep Isaac aside. Isaac was blessed by Abraham, am I correct? I'm sure you forgot that Ishmael was also blessed. You didn't know, right? Ishmael was blessed. When the mother dropped him, a blessing was released on Ishmael. <laughs> Don't forget the Bible says it is the bond woman. The woman is the bond one. The child is Abraham's child. <laughs> eh? The child is Abraham's child. <laughs> Ishmael is Abraham's child. If Ishmael did not beg to come to this world, God would be unjust not to bless Ishmael. God would be wicked not to bless Ishmael. You get it, sir? God will be unjust not to bless Ishmael. Let me ask you a question. Why should Ishmael be excluded from the blessing and the sons of the concubines of Jacob be counted the nation? Are you aware that Leah and Rachel, so to say, are the legitimate wives of Jacob? Hey, can we play a little bit game here? I know they don't teach you that in church. <laughs> If we're to walk by the rule of legitimacy, we will establish that if it is a rule of the first wife, Rachel is not a wife. If you don't catch it, you have done the do jiggy <laughs> By the rule of legitimacy, if we're to talk about the first wife, Leah, I mean Rachel, is not a first wife. By that, it means she is not also a wife. Except for the fact that dowry were paid so in their culture, because dowry was also paid, she became the second wife. But it will amaze you to know that Rachel only had two children. How many did Leah had? Just about four. Making how many? Where are the other six from? Israel has 12 tribes. So the other boys, the other tribe, where they, where they come from? Eh? <laughs> they came from where? And they are all sons of what? And they are all blessed. 
Help me hold the man close to you. Hold him very tight. Say no concubine. time is up by 13 seconds. Listen. That case is a description. The case of Jacob is a description. Not a prescription. So when you read your Bible, know what is a description and what is not a prescription. That is not how to live. Everything that resulted in the births of those children were all accidental. It was the delay in the life of Rachel that made her carry concubine give. It is not an instruction from God. When Leah thought she had left bearing children, she gave again concubine. It was not an instruction from God. Am I talking to somebody that has of God? But here is a game I want you to remember. Although how the children came about was not by God's prescription, the children are blessed by God. That's why they became mighty upon the earth. How did they become mighty? Why did they become mighty? Why did they become nations? Why did they become tribes? Because they had what we call blessing by association. How is the Jewish tribe prospering? I mean, how is the Islamic tribe prospering? Blessing by association. Are you getting what I'm saying here? I, I, I want to I, I open your eyes to the mystery of the blessing this year. I want you to value it. I want you to value what you carry. Christ has become a curse for us. That what, sir? That what, sir? That the blessing of Abraham may what? May rest. Somebody say rest. You are not talking to me. Somebody say rest. Say the blessing rest. Say the blessing rest on me. The blessing doesn't visit me. It rests on me. And you can't carry the blessing that rests and not be blessed. You resemble what you carry. Because the blessing is always transferred by words. My time is up. I'll be teaching on the purpose and the power of the blessing in the second service. What is the purpose and how powerful it is? And then we'll pray again in the second service. But in a minute, can I speak the blessing over you? Is there somebody who's been trying to get something done this week, but you've not been able to get it done by your strength? Can you subscribe to the blessing? Can you subscribe to the blessing and say, Father, I subscribe to your empowerment. Lord, I'm simply saying that it's not by my power, it's not by my might, but by your spirit. Am I talking to somebody here? That's what we're saying. We're simply saying, when we say subscribe to the blessing, we're saying subscribe to the grace of God. Subscribe to the enablement that only God places on your life. Open your mouth in a minute and say, Lord, I activate the blessing. I walk in the blessing this week. The blessing makes things easy for me. Watch and see what will begin to happen. The Bible says, and the priest shall lift up his hands and shall say to the people, the Lord bless you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And that alone, being declared on the people every week, has made the Jewish tribe to become one of the wealthiest tribe on the planet called earth. Blessed with technological advancement. As I speak the blessing, creative ideas will come. Somebody will get a concept. 
somebody will get a business idea as a blessing rests on you your mind will begin to function at a higher level as the blessing rests on you and you take it to work things will begin to work for you as the blessing rests on you doors will begin to open up as the blessing rests on you favor will find its way to you as the blessing rests on you things will begin to turn in your favor and now i say over you you are blessed of the lord you are blessed in the name of jesus you are blessed going out you are blessed coming in you are blessed in the city you are blessed at home your children are blessed home and abroad i speak the blessing over your body the blessing over your business the blessing over your works the blessing over your mind the blessing over your decisions as you go out this week the blessing goes with you the blessing makes you the blessing multiplies you the blessing advances you the blessing break barriers the blessing open doors doors you've not been able to open let the blessing open it up because you humble yourself and you are receiving from this altar let the blessing speak for you let the blessing speak for you what you've been trying to reach and you've not been able to reach let the blessing bring to you the blessing bring it to you Listen carefully to this. He said, how did you get it so quick? Pastor Friday, see how did you get it so quick? Listen, come sir. Listen to what he said. He said, the Lord brought it to me. Please look up. Don't miss this. He said, I've been trying to go to it. Stay back. Stay back. This is what the blessing does. It brings to you what you can't reach but desire. Is there anybody with such a desire here today? There are heights. There are heights you want to reach. There are things you have worked for, labored for. You have given, you paid money for. But you've not had the voice of the servant of the Lord, the prophet, who said, it's not by power. It's not by might. Work is necessary, but work is not everything. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. Such a blessing, let it rest on you today. Such a blessing rests on you now. Such a blessing open your doors for you. If you receive it, begin to give him a hand clap in the house of God.